This week we're finding out what goes into making a great thumbnail for your videos. Hello, my name is Simon Cade and this is DSLR Guide. So when you post a video to YouTube or Vimeo, they'll give you the option to use a custom thumbnail. And this is a huge opportunity to help people to click on your video because the thumbnail is hugely important when someone's deciding, do I wanna watch that video or not? So I think it's worth learning about graphic design so you can have the best thumbnails possible because like any creative field, you know, there's so much to learn, whether it's composition or color theory, what kind of fonts you wanna use, and learning to display information visually. So I think a lot of this can be summed up by looking at this image. Now this image breaks pretty much all the rules of graphic design, and it does that on purpose to make it a challenge to you, for you to find this guy. So notice how everything looks so detailed and yet nothing stands out. This is a great example of how graphic design is important because looking at this image, you don't know where to look and you have to really kind of look at it closely before you can make out anything. However, if we added some variety by making some parts darker and add some parts that have less fine detail and of course add some variation in the size, which adds a nice focal point, something where your eyes can look at, then now the image is a lot more pleasing to look at and it would work a lot better as a YouTube thumbnail. So a good way to kind of measure these factors is to look at your thumbnails and squint your eyes a little bit and see if you can still see what the general shapes are because if not, then you might want to think about adding some more contrast, whether it's through the dark and light parts or whether it's through the shapes, the size of different things in relation to each other. So the overall aim is just to make it visually striking. Now, often this just means finding the most interesting or most clickable frame from your video and screenshotting it and using that as the thumbnail. So let's say you're making a short film, you know, why not use the shot that's got the best composition and the best lighting? Because that is going to be the, the strongest frame. So for example, this thumbnail from one of my earlier videos isn't exactly clickable and it's just because there's nothing exciting about a graph. However, this new one ticks quite a few of the boxes. The first one being that it has a person in it and our eyes are very good at picking out people. It also uses well lit and nicely composed images which use the rule of thirds with some composition lines that draw us towards the center of the frame. And the episode is about music, but rather than just having a screenshot of Logic Pro, we have a guitar and we have a computer, which appeals to the techies. But don't get too caught up in making your thumbnail clickable. The thumbnail still has to be related to the video because otherwise people will watch it and then they'll feel cheated. So for example, if I did a video about camera stabilization, talking about tripods and stuff, and then I used this as my thumbnail, people would just see straight away that I was exaggerating and fishing for views. So that's no way to treat an audience. Now there is a reason why they're called thumbnails and unsurprisingly it's because they're small. So you might have the most amazing frame from your video that is just a, you know, a brilliant shot but then when you add it as a thumbnail you can't really make out what's going on. Or you might have typed out loads of text but then it's too small so that when you put it as a thumbnail no one can even read it. So this is definitely something to consider when you're making your thumbnail. Make sure you zoom right out so you can see what it would look like when it's small. So for example this shot works on the big screen but I think is a bit too detailed to work as a thumbnail. Whereas this one is a lot simpler and that I think lends itself a lot better to thumbnails. So the next thing is totally optional, but you might want to have a theme throughout your thumbnails. So this could be a color scheme or a font that you use throughout all your thumbnails. And this can help people to recognize your videos amongst the feed of all the other people's videos. And it also looks nice when you see all your videos together that they're not just all completely different colors and completely different styles. Now also, let's say you do Minecraft videos, but also vlogs, you might want to add a kind of theme to one of them so that people can tell the difference. So for example, I do my Why Filmmakers Should series and all those videos have very similar thumbnails so that people can pick those out from amongst the other ones. So at this point, you might be wondering, how can I learn enough about graphic design to be able to make good thumbnails? Well, I think the best thing you can do is look for inspiration. The staff picks on Vimeo, which I'll put a link on the blog post, if you check out those, they always have really, really beautiful thumbnails. And then also, if you just look on your subscription feed on YouTube and pick out the thumbnails which you think are visually striking, which ones are clickable, and why is that? And, you know, the more you do this, you'll kind of absorb as much information as possible, and that'll really help when you come to making your own thumbnails. So in conclusion, it really is worth spending a bit of extra time so that you can make your thumbnails as striking as possible while still being relevant to the video. 
So hopefully this has been a helpful video. On the blog post, I'll embed some videos that have taught me loads about graphic design and composition and all this stuff, so do check that out if you're interested. Link in the description. That's it for this week, and I'll see you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.